Podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Podcasting Smarter Live series. My name is Norma Jean Belenke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean. And we're so excited to be joined by James Cridlin today. I'm going to read our brief intro, kind of explaining the event. And and then we'll have a conversation with James. We're going to talk about tools, AI tools to get you started to relaunch your podcast. And just some really amazing technology that you can use to streamline your production so that you can avoid burnout and get yourself set up for success with your podcast. We are so excited. So here we go. Welcome back, everyone, to Podcasting Smarter and our December live event, Revitalize Your Podcast in the New Year, AI Podcasting Tools with Radio Futurologist and Editor of Pod News, James Cridland, where we're talking about how the future of podcast technology can help launch or relaunch your podcast. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and experts throughout the industry. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. So make sure to check that out as well. This event is leading up to January's big launch month here at Podbean with a series of events in January, all about launching and helping you maintain a sustainable, successful podcast. So check that out. Make sure to mark your calendars in January. We've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up. And Podcasting Smarter is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we'll jump in and get started. Hi, James. Hey, it's great to be here. Likewise, we are so happy that you're joining us here today. So firstly, before we jump in on tools and AI, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, for everybody out there who isn't familiar, which may not be anyone, let's be honest. (laughs) Uh, So for anybody who isn't familiar with pod news, just a little bit about that. And what is a radio futurologist? Because I think that's something where, you know, we're talking about emerging technology. This is something where, you know, you've really studied and paid attention to trends and technology as it comes out. And so in terms of predicting trends and riding the wave of what's available, we're just so excited to talk to you today. No, well, thank you so much. Yes, so I write a daily newsletter, which is all about podcasting. It's called podnews.net and it's free and you can get it every single day. And that contains you know, news and information about podcasting, hints and tips about things that you can do to improve your podcast or just find out how other people are doing in terms of numbers and all that kind of uh, thing. So, and I've been doing that for what, five, six years now. So uh, every single day, I'm looking forward to a holiday one day. That will be a nice thing. <laughs> and as you say, I call myself a radio futurologist. I've been working in radio for over 30 years now. When I started in radio, we were using vinyl records and you edited on pieces of magnetic tape, which you cut into bits. So if you wanted to de a conversation and take an um out, and it was literally getting a razor blade and actually slicing out the um and sticking it on the floor and then sticking the tape back together again. So the world has changed an awful lot since. But I help uh, radio companies understand what the future is there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, pod news is like the source of news within the podcasting industry. So you definitely also have your finger on the pulse of the podcasting industry as well. So I think it's really fun kind of both and then that intersection. I want to start off talking about transcription. Transcriptions, Mm. it's such an important aspect of podcast metadata for several reasons, right? The first is to make sure your podcast is inclusive and that it's accessible to everybody who's differently abled. That's the number one. But number two is it really helps make your podcast more well-known and more searchable right through that metadata. Mm. So transcription is a really big one. At Podbean, we have it you know, included in your hosting. Literally, you can just click transcribe this episode once you've uploaded it and you know written all your show notes and everything. So it's a really fun feature. But there's a lot of ways to transcribe your podcast and a lot of tools out there. So... In Mm. terms of the transcription services out there, what are some tools that you recommend for podcasters looking to create accurate transcripts of their episodes really efficiently? Mm, yeah, I mean, you know, transcripts, as you say, super, super helpful. And and in fact, in, in some podcast apps, there's ways to get transcripts as you're listening to the show. You can sit there and, and they just come up as if they're closed captions on the telly. 
And that's super helpful if you're standing waiting in a queue in the supermarket or something. You can keep on consuming a podcast, but not necessarily have your headphones in. So there's some really interesting things there, Pod being one of the companies that supports that. So if you're using a supported podcast app, you, you can absolutely see the words as you listen. It also means there are some really interesting tools like steno.fm, S-T-E-N-O.fm, which enables you to just look and read any podcast which is out there, which is using transcripts. So all of a sudden, you know, I use it every single day to work out what various industry podcasts are saying, make sure that I've um, understood what they've ended up saying. It's far faster sometimes just to have a quick scan through and quick search through to find out what people are actually saying. So, you know, super helpful transcripts. And of course, Google understands a transcript as well. So you're much more likely to be found by someone if you've got a transcript on your website, if you've got a transcript for each individual episode. And even Apple Podcasts is using transcripts as well to help people find shows. So there's a bunch of uh, of all of this kind of thing. I think Podbean has uh, arrangements with uh, Rev.com and a couple of others as well. There's a free podcast transcription website, which is called freepodcasttranscription.com. You can't easily forget that. <laughs> freepodcasttranscription.com. It's from uh, one of your competitors, Spreaker. But it works completely in your browser and it's completely for free. It gives you the SRT file, which is the file that you need to work on. And that'll work with uh, any show. So, you know, that's completely free. But also there are ways of doing that in some audio editors as well, which I'm sure that we'll get onto. There's a thing called Whisper that lets you download a program to your computer and your computer will do it all for you instead. So a bunch of different tools, a lot of them completely free. Some of them are quite slow, some of them are nice and quick, and probably you end up paying for the more faster ones. But they all seem to work really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something where there's going to be a transcription product for every podcast and every podcaster. And we just want to keep encouraging everybody to make transcripts for each episode. Mm. At this point, I think, you know, from a podcaster perspective, you have no excuse not to, right? It's only going to help you. It's really straightforward. Like if you want to just press a button, <laughs> we have it built in. Yeah. Like you're saying, James, there's so many tools out there. But it also helps with search. And I think that there is this kind of human element of mm. visually scanning text, right? Or having, you know, if you listen to podcasts all day, every day, right? Having that moment where maybe the words while the captions while you're reading them mm. help you understand the podcast better. That also is a really big aspect as well. Yeah, absolutely. And if your first language isn't English, it's quite useful to see the English written down and to be able to understand it clearer. So there's all kinds of reasons why transcripts are a good thing. The best transcript tools allow you to edit them. It doesn't do a very good job with my surname. It might not do a very good job with yours either. So, no. you know, so it, always good to go searching for transcript tools that allow you to actually edit. But yeah, you know, super useful. And as I'm sure that we'll get on to, transcripts can also help you edit podcasts as well. Quite a lot of yes. people will use transcripts of an interview that they've done to work out how to edit it, how to take it forward to go into a podcast and all of that. So there's some great tools that you can use there too. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I also just really wanted to quickly mention, you did mention that podcast transcripts are in a .srt file. So everybody out there, if you're uploading your podcast episode, for instance, at Podbean, you're going to and you have your transcript file, you're going to want to just make sure you upload that file in the right format. And that is .srt. So that's also mm. a really important thing. There's so many like small technical details with podcasting. But in terms of transcription, it can really only help you and you don't have an excuse anymore. Mm. You it, just make one. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And the difference between a .srt file and a .text, which you could also use as well, is that .srt files contain the timings. So it makes life really easy. You know, you'll have seen a .srt file if you're playing around on YouTube, for example. So it gets really easy to navigate through a show to understand what was said when, if you're using one of those uh, files. So yeah, they're a great, it's just w worthwhile making sure that you're using a transcript like that rather than just a big wadge of text, which is very difficult to do anything with. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's so great about the technology coming out right now. Everything is timed so perfectly, right? The timing of these things, ad timing is always baffling mm. to me. Like it's so specific and exact. And it's it's amazing the technology that 
exists within podcasting. But on the transcript side, you're right. It it really does time it with that Mm. audio so that your audience can keep up. And it really is engaging, accessible, helps people find you in search. We can just do a whole event on transcripts. (laughs) 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 I mean, really, I could talk about it forever. But I want to talk next a little bit about production value, right? It's a huge issue for podcasters. Mm. And purchasing gear is really intimidating, right? Like if, if you're new to podcasting, if you've never made a podcast before, you're like, Oh my gosh, how much do I need to spend on a mic? Am I going to be one of those people that just overspends and buys some super technical piece of equipment and maybe blow my budget? Or is it something where I'm going to buy something that maybe is, you know, on the lower end of the scale, but doesn't meet my needs? What are Mm. the needs of a specific piece of equipment for podcasting, specifically microphones? If you're new to podcasting, it can be hard to decide how to set yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, this is the thing that is asked about an awful lot on, you know, website forums, on Facebook groups, and all of this is, you know, what should I buy? And, you know, I'm looking to improve the sound of my audio. Improving the sound of your audio probably isn't going out and buying any new equipment whatsoever. Really improving your audio is learning how to use the equipment that you've got better. That's a great start, to be frank. Now, you and I are using fancy fancy microphones on fancy stands and everything else. But if you're just getting into podcasting and you want a decent microphone, then I would recommend this one. Uh, This is a Sennheiser Profile. It's a USB microphone. It's about $150, I think. Plugs straight into your computer. You talk into it like this. So it's good for video as well because you can still see somebody's face. And it's a really good, high quality, good piece of German equipment and just works fantastically. And all you need is that and your computer. There are lots of other things. There are lots of other tools. So there's, you know, you, you'll you'll have something similar to this. This is a fancy looking Scarlet Focusrite interface, which you need cables to plug into your fancy microphone and everything else. And those are all fine and super if you really want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on that. But frankly, you don't need it. Just a little USB microphone such as this on a decent stand. Don't use something like this. This is uh, that's a silly <laughs> idea. But just but just on a decent on a decent stand, that will do the job for you absolutely fine. But learn how to use it, and that means being sort of this sort of distance away from your microphone. So hands width is normally a good plan. Make sure that you've got a nice quiet room. Make sure you've got the windows closed. Normally, I've got my window open because it's really hot. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> As you're saying that, I'm like, I need to move further away from my mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um yeah really really hot in here but yes make sure that you're that you've got a quiet room make sure that it's not all glass and bare walls throwing up a rug or throwing up even a bed sheet will actually help deaden any echo so using all of that stuff and even just the basics of learning how to talk into a microphone you would be surprised how many people have one of those blue yeti microphones and they talk into the end like I'm doing here. Don't talk into the end of a Blue Yeti microphone because yeah. a, a Blue Yeti is a side microphone, yeah, not, I've got not one right an here, end actually. microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got you know? one. I've got yeah, one there right you go. Here. It has a stand built in, which is great. It's a mic for podcasting. Yeah. And it has, you know, different patterns on it. So you can go mono, I think it is. Yeah. So for two people, mm. the whole room. Mm. You're right. There is that instinct to kind of angle it and speak into it like you would yeah. the mics that we're using, which are Shure MP7s. Yes. And it's something where, you know, you have to pay attention to what pattern. Right? <laughs> you didn't expect me to pull this out, did you? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely important to get familiar with the gear that you have. I think that's a really important aspect. Yeah. Yeah, so you really you really don't need to spend an awful lot in terms of that. A decent microphone of the region of around 150 US dollars, a USB microphone these days is absolutely fine. If it's yeah. just you, if you're doing interviews with lots of other people, then of course you need more uh, tools and you need to think a little bit differently. But most people are starting with just a microphone and just them. And that works absolutely fine. And if you're doing your recording remotely, if you're interviewing somebody as we are here today, that is literally all that you end up 
needing. So there's that. And I guess the other thing that I would say is if you are recording guests and talking to people using a remote recording tool such as this, then make sure that you're mm -hmm. using a remote recording tool such as Restream or such as Descript or such as Riverside or CleanFeed. Don't just use something like Zoom or Skype because those don't sound great. And you can really tell the difference once you start using a proper tool. So those are always the tools to end up using. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really important point as well. The program of your remote recording is a really big one because you want to make sure you know, different tracks are captured, all that mm. good stuff as well. And I think also just something that you said I'd like to bring attention to is the difference between a USB or a traditional like cabled mic, right? Yeah. I think it's something where you don't have to have a super technical knowledge. You can literally get a microphone that plugs in via USB to your computer. So you can do it all from your computer, which is really great. Yeah. And those work really, really well. And yes, of course, you know, you can buy the microphones that we both have, have USB and XLR. Right. So if you want to interview three, four, five different people in one room and you've got lots of cables running all over the place and those are absolutely fine, but you don't necessarily need that all the time. So having the option is usually a good plan too. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to our friends at Shure. <laughs> I love my MV7. It's a great microphone. But like you said, there's so many good options out there. And Yes. Well, I will, I will shout out to your friends at Shure. I paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's something where there's just there's so many cool kinds of gear. It's interesting because there's going to be a microphone for every podcaster, every budget. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know, I mean, I travel with a little Shure MV88, which is this big. It's a tiny little microphone. And I travel with that rather than traveling with this with, with this great big thing. And, you know, I have to record a podcast every single day. And so making sure that I've got a little portable microphone, which is just thrown in my rucksack, you know, that, that works absolutely fine as well, you know. So you might find that if you're doing an awful lot of recording off-site, then something large and clunky such as one of these doesn't necessarily do the trick. So that's another thing just to have a think about. Yeah, absolutely. I think the portability and I've seen you, you know, on the road <laughs> with, <laughs> you know, like yeah. standing in a corner or interviewing somebody on the fly. I think it is important to remember the use case of, of how you're going to use your microphone, right? If you're doing an interview in the field or like at a podcast conference, which is a big thing, right? You're out and about and you're interviewing people at industry events for podcasting. It's something where you want, you know, you don't want to have to drag everything around with you and, and all of that. I've definitely been stopped a few times going through airport security. <laughs> what is that in your suitcase? It's my microphone. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think the US TSA broke mine. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> so yes, I had a very fancy Rode podcaster microphone, great big thing. And uh, yes, and I think that that did not survive the TSA going, what is this large metal thing in this man's, yeah. <laughs> in this man's case? <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely happened to me. They've I, Every time I go through, because, you know, you don't want to necessarily check your gear or anything. And mm. so I'll bring my microphone and my check in when I travel and it's yeah, definitely yeah, something yeah, where, indeed. and they every time they're like, "What is going on?" I'm like, "I, you know, we're in podcasting," and they're like, yeah. "Oh!" And then of course you get the inevitable, and this is what's so great about podcasting. Once you say, "Oh, I, you know, I work in podcasting," or "I have a podcast," TSA is even excited to chat with you about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the last time I was into the US, they were saying, "You know, why are you here, foreign man? What what are you going to do?" And I and I was saying, "I'm going to a conference. What's the conference about? Podcasting." Oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Exactly. always always gets excited <laughs> exactly there's always a way to break the ice in podcasting and so i want to talk next a little bit about editing so you know i've started to say this to anybody i meet in podcasting you're going to find out really quickly whether you love or you hate it right like <laughs> you're yeah. going to find out really quickly whether you love editing or whether it's just like, how can I minimize the workload on this? Can I outsource it? What are the programs? So there are some incredible tools out there in terms of what's possible for podcast editing. Um, and first, I just want to also... We're probably going to use the term DAW a couple of times. It's Digital Audio <laughs> Workspace. So if you hear that acronym, that's what, that's what it yeah, means. That's what that means. That's what that means. And so when podcasters are picking an editing product or a DAW... What are some factors in terms of features mm. and things to look out for in terms of tools you want to edit your podcast? 
Yeah, I mean, and it really depends on the sort of thing that you want to put together. If you are recording a straightforward interview with, you know, one other person, you might be better not using a fancy audio editor at all. You might be better just using a tool such as Descript or Eddy from Headliner or Alitu have one of these services as well. These are all services which you edit literally by taking a Word document. It's the transcript of your interview and you just cut off, delete the sentences that you don't want and it will automatically do all of the audio editing for you. So you can do some really easy and really good edits with these sorts of uh, tools. So Descript, the Alitu uh, software or uh, Eddy from Headliner, those all work really nicely in terms of a simple, straightforward way of getting an interview and editing that down to make sure that, you know, you've got the questions you wanted in there, you haven't got the questions that you didn't want in there. Some of them will automatically get rid of the ums and the ers, which is really smart. So you can yeah. end up doing, you know, a bunch of that. And in fact, Descript also has a number of different tools which allow you to fix things after the recording. So if you um, get something wrong, for example, you can actually teach Descript your voice. And so you can actually change that word that you messed up to the word that you meant to end up saying. And Descript will actually regenerate your voice for you. So you can do some very, very smart things with that. But those are really simple, straightforward tools. And then you've got more complicated tools. Audacity is one that's talked about an awful lot, which is a free audio editor. It's hugely difficult to use. It's a complicated thing to learn how to use. <laughs> If it was me, I would probably recommend a tool such as Hindenburg. And what Hindenburg allows you to do, it's a, a history of uh, Hindenburg as an audio editor, is it was built for busy radio newsrooms. People that wanted to make a little radio report, they wanted to pull in bits of audio from various places, and they wanted the audio editors to just fix everything and make everything sound as good as possible and make it as fast as possible as well. Also, obviously, a really important thing for a radio newsroom. And so that's where it came from. Uh, so as a result, it's perfect for podcasts. Absolutely perfect. So it'll do all of the automatic leveling for you. So everything sounds the right level. It will now do automatic transcripts as well. So you can even edit using the words if you want to. You can do all kinds of magic tools. And it will also instantly upload. There's one button and it will upload to Podbean directly. Yes, we've got that integration. Yeah. Yes, so you absolutely. Don't, you don't even need to fiddle around with the website and, and everything else. So there's a ton of these really smart tools that you can end up using. So Hindenburg is the one that I use every single day just because it is so fast. Adam Curry also uses it and he invented podcasting, so he should probably know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. I'm not sure if it's out yet, but we do have an episode with Nick Dunkerley from Hindenburg as well. Mm. So you can hear mm. a little bit about the history. Like you said, it's such a cool story, James, about how Hindenburg was started. And it's a really great DAW in terms of being able to edit quickly and efficiently. And yeah. I mean, going back to some of the other solutions that you mentioned that enable you to edit via transcript, that's such a big aspect in terms of your knowledge base. You don't have to learn sound wave editing mm. right? <laughs> to be successful at podcasting. And I think that that's so intimidating to a lot of podcasters starting out because you start a podcast because you want to say something because you have a message because there's a community that you want to build or reach out to that you want to market your business. Maybe you want to tell stories. Mm. And so in terms of creating that audio sound and create, you know, being able to just even just simple cutting and pasting in terms of editing, you know, just making sure, mm. Oh, somebody said an um or a bud or used a crutch word, just being able to pull that out and, get something on your show is so important. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, so you know, all of those tools that just make life quicker and easier to put together. Those are really those are really um, uh, uh, helpful tools. But there are also tools out there that can also fix certain things. So there's one that I talk about a fair amount, which is from Adobe. It's a tool which is called Enhance. And what that does is say you have a great interview that you've recorded with somebody, but because of whatever reason, it was in a noisy room 
You could hear cars going past outside. You could hear helicopters or maybe dogs barking if you're me. And you really want to make sure that you get rid of that extraneous noise. Well, Adobe Podcasts has a free tool, which is called Enhance at podcast.adobe.com. And you just give it the audio and it goes away and it gets rid of as much of that background noise as possible. So if you're recording by the side of the road, literally it just gets rid of all of that. It's a really clever tool. And in a pinch, if you need to, rescue some audio. My co-host, I do a long form podcast every week called the Pod News Weekly Review. And uh, my co-host interviewed somebody in a pub and it was almost impossible to hear what they were saying. (laughs) And I was thinking, Sam, did you have to do that? But put it through Adobe Podcasts and you could still tell that it was in a pub, but you could understand every single word. And that's super useful. So yeah, there's some great tools out there. There's also a a tool called Orphonic. There's a plugin in Podbean for that if if you're on uh, Podbean. And what Orphonic will do is it will basically just take a look at your, uh, your audio, make sure it's the right volume level all the way through, make sure that it's got rid of some obvious uh, background noise that it can get rid of, you know, things like mains hum and all that kind of uh, stuff. And it just sort of polishes the audio that you end up doing. So other podcast hosts call it magic mastering or something similar, but they're all using Orphonic under the hood. And a great little, (laughs) great little tool that will just smarten up your audio and make sure that it's the right volume level and sounds as good as it possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes when you have a guest, you're going to be maybe a different volume, a different level than the guest, something like that. And so getting that kind of smoothness as a podcaster, you may not think, oh, that's super important to my content. But from Mm. a listener experience, it really does make a difference if you know, you're like this, and then your, your, your guest is all the way out here or something like that. So um, I hope I I demonstrated that. (laughs) I understand what you mean, even if nobody else does. But yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, and and making sure that you get the volume levels right, making sure that you get all of that stuff right, you know, a, a good audio editor will do that for you like Hindenburg, but also, you know, something like Orphonic will also do a pretty good job, not as good a job, but a pretty good job of fixing that uh, as well. And it just makes it easier to listen to your show. And again, if that's one piece of of advice for just how to make better podcasts is go back and listen to your last podcast. Make sure that you're listening to it somewhere like in the car. Is it audible? Can you understand everything that's going on in that podcast? Is it the same volume level? as the NPR podcast that you were just listening to, or the BBC podcast, or the ABC podcast, or whatever it was, does it sound as good as the others? And that's usually a really good plan just to have a second thought of listening back in a different environment. Does it still sound as good as you think it sounds? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something where podcasting is a continual journey. Mm. (laughs) Nobody's going to get it right from day one. And so don't be afraid to listen to your show. Think about the listener experience, whether it's the content, whether it's the software you're using, whether it's your gear, your microphone, whether it's, you know, the sound volumes. I think these are all things that as a podcaster, you're going to develop your sound over time. And obviously, you know, do your best. and, And we're here to talk about, you know, all the tools that are just out there mm. and incredible. And, and we've mentioned quite a few so far. So we'll have them here in the description of our event today so that you'll be able to, you know, pop down and just click on some specific links. But I think it's something where don't feel intimidated. I think that's also yeah. uh, an important aspect right? <laughs> because it can feel overwhelming. But there are so many programs out there in terms of AI that can support that process yeah. um, of making sure your show is smooth and making sure that right now it's something where. Like you were saying, there's several programs out there. You mentioned Adobe. We've talked about Descript. Mm. If you make a mistake, not even you said too many words and you had to redo it Mm. over. If you said the wrong word and you didn't re-record it into the right word, you can change it yeah, now. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so there are tools that let you do all of that kind of uh, stuff. It can make life an awful lot easier. I mean, I have to say, you know, again, it does come back to knowing what you can do with the equipment that you have and. You don't necessarily need to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on or hundreds of dollars on, you know, new equipment It's or indeed on new software. Again, you'll get lots of people asking about plugins for your audio editor to just make that audio sound a little bit nicer. Most of the time, I always point to the radio industry and I point to the amount of radio listening, particularly in the US and here in Australia, that happens on AM. 
and you go, that's not great audio quality, but you know what? It's good enough. And that's why people are listening. Yeah. And I think a lot of this is making sure that your audio quality is good enough, not that it's as perfect and as polished as, as anybody else, but make sure that it's not annoying. Make sure that it's good enough to have a listen to. And that is absolutely where you need to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the best podcast is the one that's out there, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, the one that, it's the one that you can listen to. Yeah. So, you know, we're we're talking about a lot of these tools today because it can be really intimidating, number one, to set yourself up for production, but also podcast burnout is also yeah. something that's very real. You know, a lot of podcasts don't make it past 40 mm. or 100 mm. episodes or even six or mm. eight episodes because if you haven't found the right software to edit or it feels like intimidating or you haven't launched with a lot of episodes already produced and you feel the pressure of, oh gosh, I've said my episodes are going to come out on Tuesday and it's already Friday night and I don't want to make a new episode. You know, I think it's important to think about these things on the front end and do everything you can to reduce stress for your future yeah, self. <laughs> no, exactly. There are 4.2 million podcasts out there and you think, oh my goodness, 4.2 yeah. million podcasts. That's almost impossible to compete against. What on earth am I doing in this world? And then you have a look and you go, <laughs> actually, you know what? The total amount of podcasts uploaded in the last week, 212,000. That's a significantly better number than 4.2 million. So there are lots yeah. of shows out there, but actually those shows that are being updated, those shows which are being continually worked on is much, much smaller. Now, obviously, you know, there's um, audio fiction and documentaries which are evergreen, which can stay there forever. So that's not necessarily yeah. saying that anything's bad if it's not been uh, updated. But I think there's an awful lot of worry out there in terms of just the amount of competition which is out there. And actually, there really isn't an issue there. It's, a, it's much more focused. And I think you're absolutely right to bring up workflow. The reason that pod news comes out every day at the time it does, which is either six or seven in the morning in New York, depending on what on whether it's uh, summer or winter, um, the reason it comes out at that time is nothing to do with the fact that it's a good time to send out a newsletter in New York. It's got everything to do with the fact that it's nine o'clock at night here. And I know that if I'm working for someone else, I can still get my newsletter out in the evening if I needed to. Similarly, the reason why the format of the newsletter is the format that it is, is because it was the simplest, most straightforward way that I could make something that I was proud of and do that repeatedly again and again and again, because consistency is all that really matters here. So a lot of this comes down to workflow and how easy can you make it on yourself? That's why I use tools like Hindenburg, because they're far easier than mm. using a more complicated tool. Yes, I might get a slightly better output out of it, but at the end of the day, it's the easy straightforwardness of it all is really important. And that's why we keep on doing what we do. And getting the workflow right is a really important thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there is a program for every podcaster, right? And there's a podcast for every yeah. listener. So I think specifically with pod news and, and the work that you do, it's so time sensitive. It's really about making sure that you have those systems in place, which is why I'm just so thrilled that you're joining us today. There are those times where maybe for everyone out there, somebody out there, you're working on a podcast that's like a beautiful narrative nonfiction journey and you want to spend hours and hours and hours yeah. <laughs> doing the sound design and edit and maybe even composing original music. Like There are podcasts out there mm. like that. And so... It's really important to consider the kind of show you want to make, who your audience is, right? For specifically for news shows, it's super time sensitive. I mean, for Podcasting Smarter, our official podcast here mm. at Podbean, we're a weekly podcast. So it's the same, right? A lot of our content is evergreen. It's talking about new features, which we're always excited to chat about that kind mm. of stuff. But a lot of it is how to build your audience, tools that are coming out, industry interviews, all that kind of stuff. So it really depends on what you are comfortable with, what you can create in terms of a sustainable production process and setting that up yeah, for yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so all of these tools are there to make life easier and take out some of the drudgery. Yes, the yeah. drudgery. And so, I mean, I've written, I've written a lot of the tools that I use to publish my podcast myself, partially because I'm a bit techie like that, but also partially because anything that can save me a little bit of time one less button press 
one more check that's automatic rather than a human being checking that is really important and saves me time. So I can focus more on the creativity and less on the dull button pressing, which we all have to do. But let's try and make as least time on that as we possibly can. (laughs) Yeah, that's a really important aspect as well, right? When you're thinking about your podcast, it's like, how much of this work that isn't the most fun part am I okay with? So that's a really important consideration. And in terms of using AI or automation to streamline the process of packaging audio content for your intro outro music, sound effects, episode structure, what tools can podcasters use to really streamline that process? A number of different tools that you can use to basically pull different bits in of intros and outros and sound effects and things. Hindenburg that, that I showed you earlier has this thing called a clip, a mm-hmm. clip, uh, clipboard, clipboard. <laughs> there you go. So hidden away on the side here is all of the different bits of music that I use. So if I want my main news music, then I can literally grab it from the clipboard and drop it in there and you see it setting the correct volume level. If I want the music that I use for people news, for example, then I can highlight that and drag that in, you know. And so keeping life very simple and straightforward, having all of these tools in this clipboard is really helpful. And there are things for when I make jokes and things where I have to edit things out and all of that. And I just keep them all there (laughs) just to make life easier and a little bit more simple. So, you know, so there are tools there that you can use for that sort of thing. But there's also other tools, for example, has a tool where you can literally just set a automatic intro for your show. You pull that in. Then you record your interview and it's got an automatic outro and it'll just make all of this stuff uh, for you. And so there are a couple of tools uh, like this which are out there. So you can use those sorts of tools if you like as well. Although, frankly, as you've just seen, Clipboard, something like that is really, really easy and simple too. So there are those sorts of uh, tools and, you know, tools around episode structure, making sure that there's the intro. Here's the first bit to get people listening. Here's the interview. Here's the outro, reminding people to subscribe, all of that kind of uh, stuff. Frankly, a good tool to use for that sort of thing is Google Docs. It's just to write things down and to make sure that, again, you're really consistent every single week. So you start with explaining what the podcast is for people who've never heard it before. You explain why people should be listening to this particular episode. You go and do all of the interviews. And at the end, you remind people who you are, how they can support you if that's a thing, how they can subscribe to you, how they can send you money, all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> but just but just write it down and make sure that you send that you say it every single week. There's a good reason why many of the TV shows that we watch are essentially the same show every single week. Murder, she wrote. Same show every single week. One of my favorites, Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury finds out who did it. The end. Every single week. But people watch it. I think you're forgetting that she's visiting a niece or a nephew. I think that that's an important aspect of the formula. How many nieces and nephews? Correct. It's always always a thing. So making sure that everything is consistent, making sure that there's a framework there is an important thing. But again, there are lots of tools to do that. But also another trick is to read, you know, to actually go to the bookshelf and read stuff. (laughs) I would recommend this book, which is by Eric Newsom. It's called Make Noise. Eric used to work for NPR a long, long time ago. He was one of the original podcasters Mm -hmm. in NPR. And this is a great book that just explains everything that you need to know about how to plan a podcast, how to put a podcast together. And one of the things that he talks about in the book, which I think is a really good thing to end up talking about, is what are the 10 words that explain what your podcast is about? And if you don't have those 10 words, then you should probably go away and have a think about what those 10 words are, (laughs) you know. So a daily up on podcasting news would be my 10 words, and that's not even 10 words. It explains what it actually says. If it is a bit more difficult and more complicated to explain what your podcast is, then you should probably hone what your actual podcast is, what your podcast is there to do, because that will be really important to just help other people understand what your podcast is. So the 10 words, and there's a whole chapter in there, but the 10 words is a really important thing 
So it's not all about technology. Quite a lot of it is is just about reading, learning from people like Eric. And, and as you can see, there are plenty of other books hiding away behind me and just uh, learning a little bit more about your craft in terms of that and listening to other shows as well. I'm always surprised how few other yeah. podcasters <laughs> listen to other shows. So making yeah. sure that you're listening to a bunch of those is a really important thing too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think something that you said was really pivotal, right? Every time, introduce your podcast. Because mm. an episode for you that may be episode 50, episode 100, episode 487, mm. right? For some listeners, that's going to be their very first episode. That's going to be their introduction to you. So make sure that you know your intro is consistent. And I think a lot of these programs that we're talking about have the ability to have generic intro pre-recorded. So you can just yep. slot it in where you need yep. to. And then you can introduce each individual episode, right? The day for obviously for a news, like here's today and the today's date or the topic or guest or things mm. like that, announcements, anything like that. But to just have that consistent formula for your show, to have the same cues, the same audio cues when you're going into an ad or when you're telling a joke or when you're having a guest interview segment is so important because it psychologically connects yeah. your listener with what's happening. And so on a subconscious level, even they know, hey, okay, this is what's happening. And they're primed for it. They're excited mm. for it. You're kind of training them in this very Pavlovian way, but it really works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a lot of this comes from the world of radio where you're getting Absolutely. new listeners all the time. I used to be on the air. I used to, there were various features that I would do in the show every single day. And my program director was always telling me, James, there are new people tuning in all the time. You need to explain what this feature is. You need to explain it in a simple, consistent way every single day. And so a lot of it comes from that. And a lot of it comes from just knowing what it is that you are actually doing and doing it in a consistent way. If you listen to your favorite breakfast show on the radio, they will do the same things at the same time every day. And there's a good reason for that. And part of the reason is to make sure that you're not late for, for work or anything else. If, if the mystery voice is 10 minutes late, then you might miss your bus. So all of that is very much carefully chosen to make sure that uh, everything is as consistent as it can possibly be yeah. so that people know where they are with it. Yeah. And as a podcaster, I think it's something where you can use that knowledge for your own advantage, yeah, yeah. right? So you use it to create that flow of your show and to create that consistency for your listeners so they know what they're getting and they're excited to come back mm. for more episodes. Mm. Well, James, it's just been a pleasure today. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of links here in the description of our episode today in the comments of a lot of the programs that we've used. So don't feel like you have to... I mean, if you want to go back and listen, this is such a, <laughs> a information rich conversation that we've had today. And thank you for sharing so much knowledge. But the last thing I want to talk about today is as a radio futurologist, mm. right? Can you share how some of these technologies are impacting the podcasting industry, opening doors, and how podcasters can really take advantage. Yeah, I certainly can. Yeah, what would I say is the future? I think that there are a few things that I would say. I mean, firstly, we will see more use of AI. And the one thing that I would say about AI is that human beings are good things. Try not to replace human beings with AI. Use AI sparingly. Use it as you would an intern. So check on its work, check on what it's producing, make sure that it's producing the right thing. And if it isn't, then don't use it. Just be careful in terms of uh, AI. That's a, a first start in terms of that. But I think that AI will particularly be helpful to all of us in podcasting in terms of advertising and particularly yeah. around earning revenue. Yes. And I think it's going to be a big change in terms of how podcasters earn money from what we do coming up because all of a sudden we will see artificial intelligence being used to target the right podcasts to be advertising on, but to do other things in there as well. And I think there's some very exciting things. Not all of it will be good, but I think there's some very exciting things to come in terms of monetization tools. The other thing is YouTube which will, I think, make quite big changes to podcasting. So over the last couple of months, we've seen YouTube expanding from just doing podcasting in the US to doing podcasting in pretty well every country in the world across Asia. They've recently turned on the UK and uh, Europe is probably following soon if it hasn't already happened. So there's a bunch of exciting things happening with uh, YouTube. Now, 
don't feel that you need video because they will import RSS feeds by the end of this year. So all of that will be just fine. You don't need to go out and spend loads of money on video cameras and everything else, and unless yeah. unless you want to, you know. <laughs> so all of that is absolutely fine. But YouTube is the second biggest search engine on the internet, only second to Google itself. And what yeah. YouTube also is, is YouTube Music is a must install. It's one of those programs that has to be installed on all new Android phones. So if somebody gives you an Android phone, it's going to have YouTube Music on it and it's going to have access to podcasts on there as well. And there's good news and bad news in terms of that. There are various things you can and can't do on a YouTube podcast. And um, Putting advertising in them is one of the things that you can't do. So just be cautious about that. But I think that YouTube is going to be really interesting when it comes to podcasting. Who knows, maybe it's going to be a second wind of new people finding podcasts. Because at the end of the day, 55% yeah. of Americans don't listen to podcasts every month. So yes, 45% do, and that's a lot of Americans. But we've still got so mm -hmm. many more people that we could actually get tuning in. And the same here in Australia, where I'm speaking from, same in many countries across the world. So the more people that we can get understanding what podcasting is, listening to podcasting on a regular basis, and an increasing the amount of time that we spent listening to these particular shows is going to be really important. And I think that YouTube is certainly part of that. So that I think is very exciting and also a little bit daunting for other reasons as well. But I think hopefully is a good thing for where the future is going. Yeah, absolutely. I think both of those are just incredibly true. Like at Podbean, we've just launched... AI audio generated mm, ads. Mm. So the future is here. It's definitely something where seeing how that develops and seeing how ad technology within podcasting is just expanding at an exponential rate. It's really wild and exciting. And I think you're right. YouTube is watch the space. I think everybody <laughs> is kind of like excited and also like, oh, this is going to be a little bit different and it, more people are going to be able to find my podcast. And mm -hmm. when you're looking at an app that is come stock standard with many, 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 many millions mm. of phones, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a built in audience there that is exciting potentially to capture for many podcasters yeah. out no, there. No, I, th so. I, th I think it's going to be really, really interesting to watch. And Google, unfortunately, mm -hmm. has a history of getting very excited about something and then within, <laughs> within a year, <laughs> it down. So here's hoping that they won't do that. But I think from that point of view, I mean, anything that gets people to use YouTube music more is going to benefit YouTube anyway. But they've also got opportunities for all of us to earn more money from the way that YouTube works currently. Yeah. YouTube is funding an awful lot of creators across the world. And I think it's going to be really interesting seeing what they bring to the podcast infrastructure there as well. So there's certainly an interesting time for all of us in the podcast industry. Yeah. Oh, well, James Cridland, podnews.net. It's been such a treat. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. And well, I'll read our brief intro. Obviously, if you have any questions, reach out to us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com and you can watch the replay here on Podbean's YouTube channel and it'll be up soon on Podcasting Smarter. Thank you everyone for joining us at Podcasting Smarter for our December live event, Revitalize Your Podcast in the New Year. AI podcasting tools with radio futurologist and editor of Pod News, James Cridland where we've talked today about how the future of podcasting technology can help you launch or relaunch your podcast. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and experts throughout the industry. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. This event is leading up to January's big launch month here at Podbean with a series of events all about launching and helping you maintain a sustainable, successful podcast. So stay tuned for that. And if you joined late or you want to have another listen to this incredible conversation with so many tools and insights, you can replay this live stream on Podbean's YouTube channel and on our Podcasting Smarter podcast. We are brought to you today by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And if you have any questions, once again, you can email us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for more podcasting tips and best practices in the new year. Happy podcasting, everyone, and happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thanks, James. Thank you.